Yo, yo, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasm. I'm your host, Will. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe right down below. So you can always get your daily dose of sarcasm. So on today's podcast, man, I got a good episode for you guys. I'm joined by a couple of good guests. We're going to have fun, talk some shit, and maybe do some healing at the same time. Who knows? So I would love, love to welcome my first guest. You guys have seen her. We did an episode a couple months back uh, where we talked about healing journeys one of them and then also weight loss transformation she is very inspirational she is a good woman you can follow her i'll just let her tell you about her herself so i would love to welcome my guest miss true story hey guys what's What's going on what's going on hey what's up it's so good seeing you it's been a while I know it really has been, but you know what? Here we are. So I'm so glad for you to join me, join us. We're going to have some fun. We definitely are. Yes, we are. Thank you for having me once again. Most definitely. Thank you for coming. So people, I would love to welcome my next guest. She is new to the space. She's in the podcasting space. I asked her to come on. She said she wanted to be happy to join. So I would love to welcome my guest, Miss Fatu. Hi humans, how are y'all? Thank you for having me. I'm super ass excited. Well, thank you for coming. I appreciate it so much. I really do. I'm happy to be here. Let's get it started. Yes, yes, let's get it started. So, are y'all ready for today's topic? Yes, yes. Okay, so here it is. Healing before and after a relationship. Now, I will say like this with you being two women, I'm sure y'all deal with plenty of relationships, uh, the toxicity before and after. So in a sense, um, whoever wants to start, how are you healed before and how are you healed afterwards? Um, I can definitely go. Um, I think for me in the past relationships that I've been in, um, I wasn't healed before and I think the biggest thing for me was missing red flags um, and ignoring the red flags and not really having truth within myself when it comes to the healing aspect of it Um, and healing afterwards I mean that's a whole nother ball game <laughs> and um, healing after you know toxic relationships um, can do a number on you but um, in past situations that I've been in I needed to heal um, it was very important for my peace of mind to heal from, mm. from past uh, toxic relationships um, it wasn't easy um and um but it's it's rewarding when you do heal from those things wow nice uh Fatu? yeah definitely i'm a big ignorer of red flags and they could be you yeah. waving really high um for me as well as healing going into a relationship i always take the time no matter how long it takes um sometimes it's i go into hibernation and I think about what was wrong and what I want to do differently before I even start entering into another relationship. But it's not, I thought I was healing, let me put it that way, but I wasn't really, I was just stuffing and then moving on. And so had I took the time to actually do the work, the actual work to heal, I probably would have not ignored red flags going into the next relationship. And so it wouldn't be toxic after toxic after toxic. Definitely. So it's like you keep adding on layers of bullshit yeah. till you think you have a nice cake. Exactly. <laughs> and then, Stankiness. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Stanky ass cake. So, um, let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Or I even ask both of you. When it comes to that, you being women, what is some red flags that you say you're not going to put up with, but you'll just gloss over just because? Um. For me was it was a few things um besides a good dick throw that out (laughs) 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 
definitely not. But I would say for me, it was um, the verbal um, abuse. I mean, I kind of swayed it away where it it didn't register to me that it was in a negative way. Um, and the mama boyish type of thing, wanting the mother and, you know, and I'm not your mother. So, um, missing those red flags there for sure. The biggest one for me was the controlling mechanism. Like you're mad because I'm going somewhere and really it's toxic. I should be able to go hang out with a friend without getting to an argument about going to hang out with a friend or things that you wear. You shouldn't be wearing this. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, he must really care about me. He doesn't want me out here looking like a hoe or whatever, but really he just want to control me. I think that's like the controlling part of it is in negative I'm not going to just even say men because I know women, but for me dating a man, I just feel like the controlness is like the egotistical, you know, mindset that they have. And mm -hmm. it forms that from generational things where you see your mom and your dad and you think that that's okay. Um, and that's the biggest thing I think, you know, control, like control issues. That's one of the things that was um, a miss red flag for me too, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think we also forget that it's not just our parents, but it's like our grandparents, our aunts and uncles. We see all of that growing up and we think that it's normal, but it's really not. It's yeah, not. it isn't. And then it's also another thing, if you're a man being raised by a woman and you have no type of male influence, you start seeing, well, if my mom's whoever is treating her this way, then it shows me that I can. So you almost need to have like some type of positive male role model to show you how you're supposed to treat people as well as treat women. Because you don't want no one to treat your mom a certain way because you right. just get used yeah. to it. You get browbeaten into thinking, well, I'm supposed to call her this and treat her this way and I'm supposed to get jealous because I don't want no one seeing her the way I'm supposed to. Uh, I can say it's different for me because I grew up with just my dad. I grew up with a single father. So me trying to treat a woman a certain way is like, I respect you. I honor you. Yeah, you can show a little skin, but you can't show all the skin because those are supposed to be my skins. Bars. <laughs> but still, um, it's like, yeah, those type of relationships, you need to have some type of influence to where it's positive to where you never become toxic and you don't have to be because relationships nowadays are more harder than anything because you never know how people are coming in are they healed or will they ever get healed in any type of capacity i think in my old age i realized that there are a lot less people healed um that aren't healed so you're gonna run into that toxic that unhealed that argumentative that i'm not going to see your way because it has to be my way because it's never been my way type of person mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it's hard it's hard dealing with people like that because you think you have i put it this way you think you have this beautiful box it's wrapped perfectly, the bow and everything, all the creases are aligned, and then when you open it up, it's like you're picking through bullshit to try to see the good in somebody. Everybody's wrapped differently, but then everybody has the same type of bullshit in just a different way, and nobody wants to seem to find the diamond in the rough, so to speak. No one wants to take time to figure out who you are with this person and who you can be. So we just want to rush in and everything, and then we start building up these these levels of anxiety is like oh my god i can't believe i'm with this person but they might try to do me this way like someone else did and it's it's very rough it is i would say especially for me as a black male being out here trying to date these women who think they're flawless but still act like nothing is wrong with them and to piggyback uh, um off of you know what you're saying i just think it is very very ne necessity a necessity and very important to heal from you know the traumas that you've had in your life especially with relationships because for me i you know my name is not true story for a reason and i feel like the it took me 
four years to really heal from my my past relationship because it was so detrimental to where you know I almost committed suicide and I really had to heal and also take accountability for the things that I have done to put myself in those situations and like you know like you said, it is it, it is important to heal, and it is back past traumas. It's generational curse, but it doesn't have to be that way. And um, there's layers of change, and I think you know, finding yourself, loving yourself, taking accountability for it. Um, you know, it, it's it's important to heal from past traumas because you don't want to continue that in every cycle. You're going to find yourself just doing the same thing, just with a different man or different woman. So it's, it's important to do that for sure. The main thing that you said, the main word is accountability. No one wants to be, they want everybody else to be accountable for their actions, but they don't want to take any accountability for theirs. And even in a relationship, when we think that we've done everything right, it's not true because it takes two people to contribute to toxicity and madness. Yeah. You know, on some level, even if the person, if even if you are not actively being toxic, you are allowing the toxicity. So in essence, you are enabling that person to do whatever they're doing. And so you kind of, it's almost like, I want you to be held accountable and I'm going to dig my heels in and maybe stand there and make you be accountable. But you just end up fighting worse and worse because that person is not going to see it and they're not going to give you the words that you're actually looking for. You know, and sometimes we don't get that. Absolutely. Definitely. I yeah, so do I. So in you, uh, ladies, perspective, in your relationships, after you got out of something that was toxic, what did you do to heal from it? Like, what? how much time did you take? What was the steps that you did to make yourself better for the next person that you seamlessly would get involved with? It took me four years. And I was, you know, being on your podcast prior to, um, my, my weight loss, my natural weight loss journey was uh, the catapult to my change. And I really had to love myself um, and how that looked for me was building myself up again, affirmations, working out, you know, saying to myself on a daily basis that I'm worthy of love, I'm worthy of, you know, happiness, I'm worthy of all these things that I feel like we are destined to be and have in our life. And I had to coach myself with that. Um, four years, I was celibate. I did not talk to, to men. Um, I, I oh, took care of myself. Jesus. Yeah, I, I did. Um, when you dealt with someone that has like mentally put you down and verbally put you down to where you just was like, I don't want to be here. And then your mother and then you in a household with someone that made you feel like a single person you did everything by yourself I mean it's a lot that entails when you're dealing with a toxic narcissist person you know and it's a lot to heal from that and it took me that long and I'm grateful that I was able to do that because I I didn't find love love found me and I'm in the most happiest place that I've ever been outside of having my children. And someone loves me, you genuinely too. loves me. And I love that. <laughs> I love that you for know, you. That. Yes, yeah. yes, it's, it's a beautiful feeling. How about you, Fatu? I, um, it did, it took me, a, I healed within the relationship. Um, so I was married and divorced, but we shared a home and neither one of us wanted to, wanted to leave. So I did a lot of, um, I started my Sunday reflection. I've always journaled. I've always been an avid journaler. Um, so I did a lot of writing. I did a lot of crying. I did a lot of soul searching and figuring out what it is that I wanted. Um, but for me, the catalyst to just break the monotony was I wanted to die. And I was coming up with the plan of killing myself and just being done with it. Um, and so I had to really take a look and start having conversations with me 
about why I allowed the behavior. And if you really want something better, killing yourself is not the option. Mm. Um, but it, it got it got low. But just really the journaling, which is like even on my podcast, me reading like, reading some of the stuff that I journaled. Um, I did a lot of writing and burning, burning the paper. Um, I had long locks. I cut them off. I burned them. Um, it was just a lot. Yeah. Ooh, kudos to you for that. Because it, being in that and still having to heal is it's very strong so i can just imagine how that is and just also just being by myself and having to heal it's it's not easy let no. me put that out there it's not easy to have your good days your bad days your not feeling worthy days but you get into that momentum where you know your self-worth and you don't even think about those things anymore. You've healed from those things. I, I mean, you're not completely done healing because we always find something to heal from. But at least your mindset is different and knowing that you're worthy and knowing that, you know, you can receive love in all aspects of life. You know, it's, it's important. And I journal as well. I, I even um, do plannings. Like I do daily planners. I, I do things that put back into me. Uh, you know we're so used to, we're so used to giving to toxicity <laughs> that we forget about ourselves yeah and it's, yeah and it's, it's just it's, it's super important to give back to yourself you know so I, I, I commend you on that one to be in it I know how it is girl because I preach so I, I get survivors you. we are strong we are yeah well speaking for the band I can say for me um, my relationship I was in for four years and it took a lot out of me because I was doing shit and not realizing it until after. And I didn't find out about me until I went to therapy. And yes, I actually went to therapy Good for you. Yeah. to yeah. really get back and figure out, well, what the hell is wrong with me? And it was a lot of self-reflection. She, uh, she was one of those doctors and she was like, well, what did you do wrong? She didn't blame her. She was like, you need to blame yourself first to know what you did to really make up for, okay, how can you fix it? So like in order to find the, the solution, you got to know the problem first. Mm -hmm. And I was the problem. And I didn't know that. And I was like, I won't say intensive. I went like twice a week for three months and I had a breakthrough. And actually, I did a lot of crying. Yes, men cry too. And Thank it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and once, once that happened, I started, you know, really getting to me and figuring out, okay, you can heal from this. Because when you spend, a, like, a lot of time with a person, you know them almost more than you know anybody else. And it's like you miss this person, but you don't want to miss them because you hate them. You hate them for so many different reasons. But I learned to love them again. And then I went back to her. I said, okay, this was what, what was wrong with me. This is why I did what I did. And then we became the best of friends afterwards. And it was like really great healing therapy that it's something that you just can't teach. You got to learn to do it. And mm -hmm. therapy was my biggest thing that really helped me break through that relationship afterwards. After going and, you know, we sit down and we talking and figuring out everything. So therapy can help if you just let it. Honestly. Well, I appreciate the fact that you went back and said, hey, the drama, I'm the drama, you know, and, and work that out because I'm pretty sure she was dying slowly on the inside and really over doing that overthinking that women do. Nah, I wouldn't say like that. She had moved on, but it was just always a part of her. It's like, well, well, why did you do the shit you did? Mm -hmm. And it was just like, okay, well, I did it because I felt inadequate. And that's really what it came down to. Because, you know, having the type of upbringing I did, I'm so used to my dad seeing him doing things a certain way. You just, you pick up on it. And then I started doing it. And then I ran into a woman that I was ready for, but I wasn't ready for. If mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. No, and it makes perfect sense. Yeah. It so does. it was just a level of maturity that I wasn't on. Like we were com great. We were compatible. But just my mindset, I was not ready to be a man and lead at the same time. I was just trying to just be her man. And that's it. Because when we come across great women, we don't want to let them go for so many different reasons, even if we're not ready for them. And I was in that position. And so... 
we lasted four years we were engaged but never made it down the aisle which i'm so thankful because i probably would have been a shitty husband i really would have everything happens for a reason yep i agree with that yeah, yeah i'm tired of hearing that I really and that's it's the truth though <laughs> it, it is it really it is, is. Everything everything does does it does it breaks us it does and i i feel like we are in situations to teach us a lesson, mm -hmm. you know, and I feel like, you know, people come into your place for a reason, for a season, or for a lifetime. And in all of those things, you you get a lesson out of all three of those. So, you know, and for one, it's amazing that you're even taking accountability for your wrongdoings in the relationship. Because like she said, most people, well, a lot of people don't want to take the accountability on the things that they have contribute to the relationship as to why it's toxic where you hate each other, you know, so um, sometimes you just have to forgive people even if they don't say sorry to you or even come to you because there's not a lot of men that will come and say, hey, you know, listen, I did this and I hurt you. So that's amazing that you've even done that. So kudos to you. Yeah, I and I tell you, I was, I was tough to do because you can say sorry and not mean it, but you can apologize and actually mean it, and that's a lot of thing that I think men don't do when it comes to relationships. Afterwards, they just want to say sorry and gloss over it and not really care about the the emotion emotional strain that they put on a person and so until you take the accountability for the things that you did and how you caused it then it's almost like you don't even care about the other person you just more care about letting the steam off of you go and moving on so it was really hard to go back to her and say i apologize for how i fucked up our relationship i apologize for the shit that i never considered when we had talks like well we need to talk about things no we don't we don't need to talk about anything just kiss let's say we love each other and move on so tough conversations like that can really help relationships if people are just willing to compromise sit down and listen and then figure out yeah but i bet you the next time if you're not in a relationship or married now the next woman that is worth that will be very happy and very lucky yeah yeah i call her my credit card because i just swipe and she'll just shut up so i'm done <laughs> terrible <laughs> Cause she never talks back. All the time she talks back, it's like, "Well, it's time to pay me," and that's it. So you know, I'm good. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? I'm done too. Uh, okay. It's time to go. Well, all right, we're fine. If you want to wrap this up, we can do it. It's just whatever. They go shame me for how I feel. <laughs> Oh, man. But ladies, in essence, when it comes to healing before and after relationship, what are some of the things you can say to other people just to really a heed to? Time. Take the time. Yeah. And don't take the time looking for someone else. Yeah. Take the time looking for you and figure out what it is that you really want. Because some of us don't know what we want. We think we want what we see online. Or what we see on TV and that may not be what we really want. So take the time to learn what you want. Be happy with you. Learn to sit with you and be okay with being alone. Love you and most importantly like you before you allow somebody else to come in your space. Because if you don't love or like you, nobody else will. Absolutely. I agree with that. And to be patient, you know. Mm -hmm be very patient with yourself with the process you know trust the process um you know if there is a light at the end of the tunnel for you um and you know there is challenges and trials and tribulations that go through with your with your journey but just be patient with yourself know that you are worthy self-love is like the key to success of your peace of mind your soul your body and your spirit know that you know it takes you like she said if you don't love yourself who's going to love you you know so put that back in yourself what you see in the universe or what you see out there it's not all sugars and pies and creams you know Sounds know that you know what you want know what you want 
and ask for it and you shall receive but you have to walk in that you have to speak that you have to feel that and you have to know that and trust the process don't don't nothing happens overnight you know no push no. timing is not going to come down from the sky you got to do the work and when you do the work god sees it or whoever you pray to sees that the universe sees that and he will give you she will they will give you those things mm -hmm. if you do the work you know but just be patient with yourself you know love on yourself loving yourself hard you know you, you have to mm -hmm. And enjoy, enjoy the when you get a relationship. Enjoy it and take your time. Okay, this microwave, quick, 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 is not the business. Yes. And then also time, patience, mental inventory. Why don't you take a mental inventory of yourself, mm -hmm. of what you did before and what you're doing afterwards? Because if you can learn from that, you can be better next time around. And you know your downfalls on how to make sure it doesn't happen all over again mm -hmm. so always take a mental inventory of yourself self-reflect definitely self-reflection so miss ladies um whoever wants to go first how can people reach you you know they want to talk to you if you got a podcast they want to be your friend you know drop some phone numbers so they can get hold of you one-on-one -on -one. not the phone not number. The number. <laughs> Hold on now, I can give you the social media. That's a little too much. It's not enough. It's not enough. You know, people need to reach you 24-7. Come on now. I mean, you can have my email. Right. We don't want your email. It goes spam. We want your phone number. Nothing. No. Whatever. We don't even want the what the, uh, those calling lists calling us. You think we want, uh, we want? We don't want them people calling us. Yes, you do. Yes, no, you do. they're blocked. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. They <All> blocked. Right. <laughs> But for me, my name is Felicia, but I go by True Story. You guys can find me on Instagram, social media. Uh, Instagram is uh, True Story. Um, I do have Facebook. It's Felicia W. Um, I am a motivational speaker as well as a weight loss, natural weight loss influencer. So you guys can see my journey on there. My uh, my change and what I give back to others and helping and guiding and giving tools and tips that I've done that help me on my wellness journey so you guys can check me out there I do have daily planners you guys can go on my Instagram and hit me up so yes I'm all for the change for sure so you can hit me there I am Fatu uh, my podcast is um, on YouTube um, it's this could be a book and it is um, spelled T H I Z C U D B A B O O K. And I am on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook under all of those names, as well as YouTube. Um, I am going through my healing journey from my parental childhood, uh, my relationships after that, um, how I let my downfall from my parents' uh, abuse lead to how I am in real life and then trying to be better than, than I have been. Okay, okay. Wow. Wow. All the way around. Yeah, uh, this this was a good episode. I appreciate both you ladies, one hundred percent. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, that was oh, awesome. Definitely, and both y'all are welcome to come back anytime y'all want to talk about whatever. It does not matter. I always welcome both of y'all. So thank you so much, Thank, you. thank, thank you. you so much, True. And yes, please y'all go check them out. Uh, their information will be down the link in the description, so you can add them. I'll try to get their phone numbers for everybody so y'all can hit them up. I'll try. I can't make any promises, but you know what? Maybe this charm might win them over. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not terrible. I'm not terrible. You know, I, I just try to state the obvious, all right? Trying to get people blocked. Right. If they call you for numbers, they won't be blocked. They'll just be spared. Yes. <laughs> Let's just avoid it all the way around the board. Let's not avoid it. Let's embrace it. There's a difference. It's okay. We, we gave our social media. That part. <laughs> See what happens? You just can't put black women together. They just want to shut you down all together. All mm -mm. Mm -mm. Ah, no. <laughs> no, we just yeah. gave all the, all <laughs> the good info and everything.
Uh, we can't give I'm, up I'm just I'm just mess with y'all but yes thank y'all so much 100% I appreciate y'all so make sure y'all go check them out um, like I said their info will be down in the bottom and of course you know it's me Mr. Sarcasm himself you want to hit me up sarcasm two underscores orgasms and on this podcast we talked about healing before and after relationship remember only you can do the work no one else can do it for you once you do it you'll be great but you got to want to someone can't force you just like taking a person to rehab they can only want to go if they're ready so once you're ready everything else will just be a breeze so as far as my guest fought to and true stories Thank you so much for joining us and, you know, talking about some healing. So, I will talk to y'all all all soon. Y'all take care, and I'll talk to y'all next time. Bye.